What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Pine Pet Sports Podcast, hosted by Joey Larry. So tonight, I'm going to be putting out an episode for Northeastern Hockey with a season preview of the 2023-2024 season with Mark Walsh and Peter Amara, Music Box Pete. Check him out on Spotify. And then Mark Walsh Music. Check him out on Spotify as well. Both of them are great at what they do. Pete is a podcast he's had for some years now, and then Mark has been putting out some music on Spotify over the last couple of years as well. Go check them out. But in this episode right now, I'm going to give a preview of Thursday Night Football with the Chicago Bears traveling to play the Washington Commanders on the road in D.C. The Bears are underdogs in this game. They looked good on offense last week. I know Denver does have the worst defense in the league. They lost the game 31-28 to Denver, but they were up in that game heavily, 28-7, with four minutes to go in the third quarter, things are really looking up for them, especially on offense. Justin Fields had his best game as a pro passing the ball, 28 of 35 passing, 335 yards, four touchdowns with an interception and a fumble. He did have a fumble that ended up being returned for a touchdown by Denver's defense to make it a 28 to 28 game with seven minutes to go. Very costly play there. And he also threw an interception on the last drive of the game for Chicago's offense with a chance to go down the field, either tie it or take the lead. Unfortunately, that's not the way things worked out for Justin Fields. He ended up throwing a pick with 38 seconds left to go on Chicago's 46-yard line, and that's the way the game ends, 31-28. But Fields did look very crisp as a passer in this game, which I know Denver does have the worst defense in the league, so obviously he's going to have a career day passing the ball when you're playing that defense. But Fields did look like a different quarterback that week, last week, than he did in weeks past. He looked a lot more comfortable in the pocket and didn't really use his legs as much as he typically relies on them. In the games, like I said, 335 passing yards, four touchdowns with a pick and a fumble. Obviously, two turnovers in the second half that were very costly, one of them being an interception to end the game, and the other being a fumble that was recovered by Denver's defense and returned for a touchdown. One thing about Chicago's offense is that they got other guys going in this game besides field. Khalil Herbert looked great, 18 carries, 103 yards. DJ Moore had a great game, 8 catches for 131 yards and a touchdown. Cole Komet really got things going this week as well in week 4. 7 catches, 85 yards and 2 touchdowns. Khalil Herbert also had 4 catches for 19 yards and a touchdown in the year as well. So great game from him. Great to see him really break out. I thought Roshan Johnson was going to end up being that guy in that backfield, considering Herbert didn't look great in the first three weeks of the season. Going into last week's game, there was a report that Khalil Herbert was going to lose some carries to Johnson, and then he ends up really breaking out. He must have been mad about that report, and he really proved that he should be the lead back of that backfield. As for the Broncos last week, Russell Wilson, 21-20 passing, three touchdowns with 223 yards. He looks very crisp. He's quietly having a big bounce back season this year, but Denver is only 1-3 and three on the year, considering they have the worst defense in the NFL. I'm not really buying into them really turning things around. They have the Jets this week. Zach Wilson looked great on Sunday Night Football. I'm going to give a recap of that game probably tomorrow. But Zach Wilson did look great against the Chiefs on Sunday Night Football. And I expect him to have a big week this week against the Denver Broncos. So Denver's now 1-3 and three on the year. I don't really buy into them, though, turning things around. As for the Commanders, they're 2-2 two and two on the season. Had a tough week last week. 34-31 loss to the Philadelphia Eagles in overtime. They actually had a chance to try and win the game at the end of regulation. They scored a touchdown with two seconds to go. A touchdown pass from Sam Howard to Jahan Dotson for a 10-yard touchdown on second and 10 with only two seconds left in the game. So the end of regulation came up. They had a chance to either go for two and win the game or kick the extra point and go for OT. They ended up deciding to go for OT. I thought they should have tried the two-point conversion play and just try to win the game then because if you're trying to play for overtime, you're risking the Philadelphia Eagles winning the coin toss and then going down the field and winning the game with a touchdown. So I thought they probably should have went for two. That's in hindsight, though. Now, especially when they lose the game, you look back and say they should have went for two. If they went for one and then end up winning the game overtime, nobody would be talking about that. But if you have a chance to win the game, especially on the road, I think you go for two. Like the Giants against the Tennessee Titans last season, week one of the 2022 season, the Giants had a chance to do the same thing, go for two and win the game, or kick their support point and try to go for overtime. The Giants went for two and ends up working. They win the game. When you look back, obviously, it looks like a great decision. If they lost the game on that, that would obviously be a salty play and a play people would look back at and obviously be disappointed in. But I think in that decision with Philadelphia – and their offense was rolling on the day with 31 points, I would have said, let's go for two, try to win the game here. That's not what Ron Rivera decided to do. And obviously Washington ends up losing the game 34-31 in overtime. Sam Howell had a good game, 29-41 passing, 290 yards and a touchdown. Also had six carries for 40 yards on the ground. Brian Robinson, 14 carries for 45 yards on a touchdown. Terry McLaurin had a very good game, eight catches for 86 yards on 10 targets. And they got Jahan Dotson going, four catches for 27 yards and a touchdown. Tonight's game will be a battle. I think it'll be a close game. If you look at the numbers for both teams, both their defenses are weak. Chicago giving up 34 points per game, which is 31st in the NFL. And then Washington's giving up 30 points per game, which is 29th in the NFL. The Bears defense giving up 383 yards per game, which is 28th. 
Washington giving up 352 yards per game, which is 21st in the NFL. Both these teams do have weak defenses. And then when you look at their offenses, they're pretty similar. Chicago's averaging 19 points per game, which is 22nd in the NFL. Washington averaging 22 points per game, which is 17th in the NFL. And then yards per game, they're very similar. 305 yards for Chicago per game. Washington at 307, so 21st and 20th respectively in yards per game this season. And both have the same amount of turnovers this year, eight turnovers apiece, which is 26th in the NFL. So very similar offenses, and then obviously very similar defenses as well. Chicago's a team that's 0-4 on the year. I liked them to win last week against Denver. They were up in that game at 1.28-7, to and they lose 31-28, giving up 24 straight points to lose that game, which is obviously disappointing. But the offense is starting to figure things out. In the fourth quarter against the Chiefs in week three, they scored 10 points, which that wasn't garbage time, but their offense started to get some positive momentum in the fourth quarter. DJ Moore caught a touchdown pass with Justin Fields. He looked a little bit better in the fourth quarter against the Chiefs. As I said, it was garbage time, so backups were in the game. But regardless, they finished that game with two positive offensive drives. And then last week, Fields had his best passing game of his NFL career. And I think if you look at it, Fields is progressing. Even though a lot of people look at the record, they're 0-4. They see his mistakes, especially that costly fumble last week. They see his mistakes. They like talking about that a lot more than a lot of his good throws last week, which, as I said, he's going up against his defense, one of the worst in the NFL, if not the worst. Regardless, with that being said, though, I saw a lot of progression in his game over the last couple of weeks, and I think when they play tonight against Washington, they're underdogs. A lot of people are expecting them to lose. I think Fields has a great game tonight. I think he's going to throw for 250 yards and two touchdowns with a rushing touchdown. So I'm going to go three total touchdowns by Fields with 250 passing yards. I think he throws a touchdown to DJ Moore in tonight's game. He's been very consistent over the last few weeks for Chicago's offense and is a clear wide receiver one in that offense. And then obviously Cole Komet got things going last week, so hopefully Fields finds a way to get him more involved this week, yet again for two weeks in a row being a productive player in that offense. As for Washington's offense, they need to find a way to get Sam Howell to be more consistent. He's got four passing touchdowns on the season with five interceptions. One thing I thought Sam Howell would do this season, I thought he'd have a high passing touchdown total around 20 to 25-ish. And then I thought he'd have a high interception total around 12 to 15. I think I had him at 25 touchdowns and 15 picks in the year. It's still like that could be a good stat line if he can get his passing touchdowns up. I think tonight's going to be a high-scoring game. I expect him to find Terry McLaurin for a touchdown. And as I said, I think the Bears are going to have a good night at offense. I think it's going to be a high-scoring, very close game. I think it's coming down to the wire. I'm going to go with the Bears winning this one. 31-27. I predicted the Bears win last week. They ended up losing that game. They were an underdog in that one. They're an underdog in this week yet again. And this time, they're on the road on Thursday Night Football on primetime TV. I'm going to go with them winning this game. Even though it is a hot take, I liked what I saw from that offense last week. And I know a lot of people have been criticizing Justin Fields and have been talking about whether or not he can be a quarterback at the pro level and be successful. It's hard to tell right now whether or not he can be a quarterback at this level that's going to win you a Super Bowl. But I think he's been better than his critics want to give him credit for. And I think tonight, just like I predicted, Zach Wilson had a big game on primetime TV on Sunday Night Football. I think Justin Fields has another big passing night tonight. I went 250 passing guys with three total touchdowns. And I think DJ Moore is going to be the guy that he finds for a touchdown score. I think DJ Moore is going to be a big night. I'm going to go six catches, 85 yards, and a touchdown for DJ Moore. I expect this offense to put up points on Washington's defense. Washington's defense is giving up 30 points per game on the season. I think Fields and the Bears' offense is capable of putting up 30 on them, so it would just be right around their average on the season in points allowed. I'm going to go with the Bears winning this one, 31-27. And as I said, i like Justin Fields to have a night tonight. As for Sam Howell, I think he's going to throw around two touchdown passes and maybe 225 passing yards with a pick. So there are my thoughts on Justin Fields and Sam Howell and how I think they perform in tonight's game. I think it's going to be a very close battle. I expect... The Chicago Bears to use the pass game to their advantage and try to use DJ Moore, Cole Komet, maybe Khalil Herbert out of the backfield and try to throw to those guys and give them some space to run. As for that offense for the Washington Commanders, I think they're going to rely on Terry McLaurin a lot and Brian Robinson. I expect Robinson to have a good game on the ground. The Bears defense hasn't been great against a run this season, so I expect them to take advantage of the run game. But I expect it to be a very close game, high scoring. I'm going to go with the Bears having an upset win tonight on Thursday Night Football 31-27 with them picking up their first win of the season. I went with them winning last week against Denver. I missed that. Very close game, though. I thought they were going to win it. They ended up losing, blowing a big lead. I think they pick up their first win tonight as an underdog yet again for another week. We'll see if that's the case. I think it'll be a good game nevertheless. Anyways, we'll conclude this episode. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to this. As always, I appreciate it. I hope you guys have a good one, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.